It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories in 90 seconds. Uh, give me the cell phone. Get out of the room. 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 Go down, go down, go down. A Marine combat veteran is tased by police as he stands by his infant daughter's hospital bed in Colorado Springs. He says police reached for a cell phone they had no business reaching for. They never presented a warrant or any paperwork saying that they had authority to take my personal property. He is now filing an excessive force complaint. It is one of two such complaints we're following tonight. No, no, no. Okay. Let's stop. Come on. Come on. I'm going home. Loveland police violently arrest an elderly woman with dementia, accused of stealing from Walmart and giving the items back. I'm going home. I'm going home. Plus, new rules go into effect in Denver on Friday, opening up restaurants to full capacity. Recognizing that this city has to be open for business, but we also got to keep people safe. Good Wednesday evening, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. We have rain and snow moving through Colorado right now. This is a live look at a dreary mile high camera in Denver. We start with Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, it'll stay wet and even snowy heading into the weekend. Uh, Jessica, it's been a tough couple of days. It's going to get worse in the next 24 to 36 hours. Right now, the current temperatures along the front range, it's 40 in Denver, 39 in Fort Collins, but 25 degrees in Cheyenne, while it's still 65 degrees in Montrose, obviously there's a front out there to the south and west of us, and there's rain and snow developing along the front range. There's a winter weather advisory for tomorrow evening until Friday morning in the mountains west of Denver for up to about 10 inches of snow. And look at this, a winter storm watch out of the Northeast Plains. We're going to see some moisture as well. Not much tonight, a little bit of light rain and snow shower activity. But here are the headlines for tonight. Just a few snow showers now, more snow late Thursday and heavy snow likely Thursday night into early Friday and the cold weather lingers at least through Saturday. Thank you, Mike. Tonight, two lawsuits brought against two Front Range Police Departments claiming excessive force. On the left, Colorado Springs Police, along with Teller County deputies, tased a combat veteran while he was in the hospital at his two-year-old daughter's bedside. The lawsuit says they tried to take his fiance's cell phone without a warrant. Now on the right, Loveland police stop a 73-year-old woman with dementia who was accused of stealing $13 worth of items from Walmart. Despite her giving the items back, the lawsuit says officers threw her to the ground and wound up dislocating her shoulder. The videos are disturbing on their own, but they only share one side of the story, and the courts will ultimately decide what comes out of this. We start with Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo with more on that video out of Colorado Springs. Give me the cell phone. Get out of the room. Get out of the room. Get out of the room. Go down. Go down. Get back Go down. Right. Get out of the room. This is not right. Are you serious? This is not right. Put your hands behind your back. Ah! It's this incident captured on officers' body cameras at Memorial Hospital in Colorado Springs two years ago. Under scrutiny and a complaint filed against the city of Colorado Springs, Teller County, and the officers involved. I'm not leaving my daughter's side. Carl Anderson Jr.'s two year old daughter, Charlotte, was airlifted to the hospital after he says his fiance accidentally hit her while driving out of the driveway. Charlotte was in ICU when several officers entered the hospital room. You see an officer attempt to reach for Anderson. Oh, excuse hey, me, you hey. do not grab anything hey. in my pockets. Hey. Officers wanted to confiscate the parents' cell phones. Just give us the phone and we'll be done. For an investigation into their daughter's incident. They never presented a warrant or any paperwork saying that they had authority to take my personal property. When he refused, officers surrounded him. So I'm going to go behind you because I don't want anybody behind you getting hurt. Moments later, <laughs> Anderson was tased twice, forced to the ground and handcuffed as his father called for help. They need to be prosecuted. Anderson's attorney, David Lane, says there was no reasonable suspicion or probable cause for the violent interaction. They were not arresting CJ. They were not arresting anyone. 
So the police have absolutely no right to demand personal property from anyone, absent a warrant. Anderson is a Marine veteran and served in Afghanistan. I have the utmost respect for law enforcement. He says these officers crossed the line and must be held accountable. I believe these officers need to be fired. His attorney wants to take it a step further. The felony assault is what they did. They committed a crime. They should be doing some time. Anderson was charged for resisting arrest and obstructing a peace officer. Both charges were dropped. Lane says no charges were filed against the parents for Charlotte's injury. Now, Anderson tells us his daughter Charlotte has made a full recovery since the accident. We asked why now? Why speak out two years after this incident happened? Anderson's attorney tells us it's because these officers haven't been held accountable and because of the excessive use of force by police they say they've seen across the U.S. Now, we did reach out to Teller County Sheriff's Office and we reached out to the Colorado Springs Police Department. They tell us they can't comment on an ongoing lawsuit. Reporting live in Denver, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. Addie, thank you. A lawsuit was also filed today against the Loveland Police Department on behalf of a 73 year old woman with dementia who was violently detained while walking home. Attorneys for Karen Garner say last June she left a Walmart in Loveland without paying for some items. They say her dementia, along with another condition, makes it difficult for her to communicate with others. The stolen items amounted to $13.88, which she gave back to Walmart employees. On her way home, she was confronted by police, and then this happened. You want to stop the lights on, siren? Stop. You just left Walmart. Do you need to be arrested right now? No, no, no. Okay. Let's stop. Come on. Come on. I'm going home. Video shows another officer showing up to the scene and forcing Garner on the hood of the police car. Attorneys say her shoulder was dislocated then. Attorneys also say the officer showed no remorse and even joked with other officers who arrived on scene. A little bloody, a little muddy, that's how it works. Yeah. Is the blood on her? Yeah. yeah. Now we did reach out to Loveland Police for a response to this video. They have not responded to us. Use of force was the number one topic of discussion tonight during a police forum for Denver's Citizen Oversight Board. Police Chief Paul Pazin updated the board on recommendations given by an independent monitor for his department's response to the George Floyd protests last summer. He says the department is still learning. Facilitate and support people that are exercising their First Amendment right. Uh, that we uh, are able to ensure that uh, property is, is uh, safely protected, uh, that uh, our officers are, are safe uh, as well. So we're committed to learning from this. Turn to Channel 7 tonight at 10 for complete coverage of these stories and the role of force in Colorado's police departments. Now a live look at protests in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. For another night, protests are being protesters are being confronted by police after the police shooting of 20-year-old Dante Wright. Tonight, a vigil was held to honor Wright. An officer shot and killed the 20-year-old during a traffic stop on Sunday. The former Book Brooklyn Center police chief says the officer shot Wright by mistake, intending to use her taser, but firing her handgun instead. The now ex-police officer Kim Potter is charged with second-degree manslaughter. She and the Brooklyn Center police chief resigned after the incident. Potter was booked into the jail this morning. Now to the coronavirus. The CDC says it will wait to make a decision on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The agency says it needs to do more research on a rare type of blood clot before it can issue updated guidelines. The CDC and FDA recommended pausing use of the J&J &J vaccine yesterday. They made the decision after six reported cases of blood clots in recently vaccinated women. Again, this is extremely rare, about a one in a million chance you could have this happen to you. Vaccine advisors to the CDC hope to meet again on Friday to discuss the next steps. New COVID rules are going into effect on Friday in Denver. Restaurants will be able to operate with 100% capacity. Denver 7's Jason Grenauer breaks it down for us. 100% capacity at restaurants and gyms and no mask required outside. 
Those are the biggest of the changes Mayor Hancock announced as Denver will move to what is basically level blue on the state's dial when the state's dial expires on Friday. Some of the things to keep in mind, there will still be a six foot social distancing requirement, so that may impact the actual capacity allowed at some gyms and restaurants, and the mask mandate is still in effect indoors. Well, again, this is going to go into effect on Friday and last at least 30 days. Good news for many, but coming at a time when case numbers in Denver are on the rise. Here's what the mayor had to say about that. Recognizing that this city has to be open for business, but we also got to keep people safe. I think the difference here, as opposed to last year this time or even this past fall, is we have the vaccine. Denver moving to level blue with some tweaks is similar to what's happening Friday in most nearby counties, except for Douglas. Doug Co commissioners voted recently to basically drop all restrictions, and Denver health officials were asked about that. I think it's risky. Uh, it's a risky move to do that. I think it's a little too soon and we're certainly not going to do it here in Denver. The ultimate goal is to move Denver to a green level and drop more restrictions, but McDonald says that will all depend on vaccinations. 41% of Denverites have gotten at least one vaccine. In the newsroom, I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. We need to make sure that these minimum housing standards are being met, especially for those who are most vulnerable and maybe don't have a voice. Denver's affordable housing crisis has only been amplified by the pandemic, but some say adding new license requirements for rental properties won't help. I mean, it's really, really bad, and this is not going to help. Lakes in the forecast, an April snowstorm heading to Colorado. Plus, teachers are already preparing to welcome your young children back to school next year. How to line up, how to get a lunch, how to, when there's a problem with a friend, how do we handle that? Half of kindergarten is the social part. 